How do you copy files from a virtual machine back to a host when you're using a virtualization product like Hyper-V? Now, getting files from the host to the VM is actually pretty easy. You can put the files in an ISO, you can attach them as a CD, you can also use a PowerShell command to send data from the host to the VM. But how do you get data from the VM back out to the host? Well, I'll tell you that in a second. Just give me 30 seconds to pay the bills here. This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Click the link in the description below and get Atlas VPN for $1.99 a month for three years with a 30 day money back guarantee. Look, this video is about virtual machines and I use virtual machines every single day. When I do things like browse the Russian Ministry of Defense, I use Atlas VPN on my computer to hide my IP address along with a VM to reduce the consequences of clicking on the wrong thing. And best of all, Atlas VPN is super easy to use. They have locations all over the world that you can choose your IP address to appear from, including locations where Russia does not block your IP. Just select your location and then click this button. Instantly, you're protected. Atlas VPN creates a tunnel from your computer through the public internet that hackers and rogue government agents can't penetrate. So click the link in the description below and get Atlas VPN for $1.99 a month for three years with a 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks for sticking with me. So there's basically two ways to do this. Move a file from the VM to the host. Your first will work if you have VMs networked and the second will work even if you don't. Now I personally had to do this at work a few days ago when I had several test VMs that were not networked and were not allowed to be networked, but I still need to get information off of them. So the first solution of using the network wouldn't work in any case, but I'm gonna show you how to do this anyway. Now I would call this solution the network solution, so here's how you would do it. On your host machine, go to a temporary directory, or just any directory really, and create a new folder. And I'm just gonna call this VMs. This is gonna be our transfer directory. Right click that directory called VMs and go to properties and select sharing. And then share that directory with whatever user you're gonna need to share it with. In this case, I'm just gonna call it test Ryan. And I'm gonna add that user into here. And I'm gonna make sure this particular user has read write permissions. That way we can actually share files back and forth. Now, once that's done, take this and copy it. Just hit Control C, copy it, and close it. Now, start up your VM that you want to pull data off of. Okay, now let's connect to this VM. All right, once your VM is open, go to the File Explorer and click on this PC. Right click and select Add a Network Location. And let's run through the wizard. We're gonna choose a custom network location and right here, hit Control V and paste in the network location of this v, uh, VM folder right here. If we we'll go back, remember, go to Properties and see Sharing, this network path. Make sure this network path is the same path as here. Hit Next and enter in your credentials. All right, let's hit Next and let's hit Finish. And this is gonna open up this VM folder. So now I can create a file. I can go to New and I'll just create a text document here ryan.txt. As you can see, this is in the VM right here, but if I go to the VM folder on my host, there's ryan.txt. Okay, now here's a second way to do it that doesn't require a network connection. We're gonna do this with a virtual disk solution. So step one, let's hit that Windows button and we're just gonna create or type in the disk manager. And create and format hard disk drive partitions. All right, this opened up in a different window. So let me move this thing over here. All right, there we go. Go to action and say create VHD. Now go to browse under location and you can just go to uh, that temporary directory. You can name the thing whatever you want. I'm gonna name it transfer disk. and make sure you select VHDX. This gives you a more modern virtual disk format that allows you to grow and shrink the volume. It allows for larger volumes. So hit save and make sure you've selected VHDX. Uh, you can make this size pretty much anything you want. I'm just gonna choose one gigabyte because we're just doing this as a demo. It doesn't matter whether it's fixed size or dynamic. Hit okay. Now you can see down here, the disk appears inside disk management. So step one is to turn this disk on. You're gonna do that by initializing the disk. 
So we're gonna make sure this thing says GPT because this is not a bootable disk. We're gonna hit OK. And this thing's gonna initialize. All right, we're online now. Now right click and create a new simple volume. Go through the wizard. You can pretty much call this anything you want. I'm gonna call it the E drive. Hit next, NTFS. You can label the volume if you want, next. And we're gonna finish. And of course you have to format the disk. Okay, now the disk is formatted. So now we have the disk running, everything's great. So let's actually go to this disk and we're gonna drop something on this disk to make sure it's working. So I'm just gonna call, create a new file. I'm gonna create a text document, gonna say transfer. Now we have the transfer file on that disk. All right, now we need to connect this disk to the VM, but we can't do it while it's attached to the host machine. So we're gonna take this disk, we're gonna right click on disk one, we're gonna say detach VHD. And this will remove the transfer disk. So now the transfer disk is no longer attached, but the transfer disk is still in the temporary directory right here. Now let's head over to the virtual machine we wanna connect this disk to. Right click, click on settings. And let's add this disk in settings. So go to SCSI controller, hard drive, add, and SCSI controller, virtual hard disk. Hit browse and browse to the virtual hard disk that we just created that in this case is in the temp folder. And hit OK. OK, so now if we actually open up the VM, we should see this disk in my PC. And there it is, new volume, and there's the word transfer. Now, if we need to put something on this drive to transfer it out of the VM, I can easily create a new file right here and say ryan.transfer.text and save it. Now this is on the virtual disk. I'm gonna shut this machine down, turn off. That way we've completely removed this disk from being accessed by the VM. Now we could head back to Disk Manager and re-add that disk, but there's actually a faster way to do this. We can just go and we can double click transfer disk VHDX and the OS will automatically add this disk. And as you can see, Ryan transfer.txt is on that disk. And that is how you transfer a file from a virtual machine to your host machine. Hey, one more thing. I have all of these army t-shirts, but I really don't have any t-shirts for cybersecurity. So if there's a cybersecurity or software t-shirt that you'd like to see me sell on Bunker Branding, let me know in the comments below what you'd like that shirt to say. And thank you so much for watching. It's me, Captain Bannon of the documentary Team Yankee. When I'm not kicking commie butts, I'm wearing t-shirts from Ryan Macbeth available at Bunker Branding, Knife Hands, High Mars, Landmines, Patriot, and even my favorite, the tow missile. Mushna, we want t-shirt too. Take a hike, commie. Ah! So come on down to Bunker Branding and take a stand for what's really important about America. Capitalism.